Hey folks, welcome back to the farm. We're going to make today the original MRE. If you don't know what an MRE is, it's called Meal Ready to Eat. That's what that stands for. And we're not going to do the kind like the military uses. We're going to do the original MRE. That is something canned out of your root cellar that you can open up, dump into a pot, warm up, and your meal is done. So we're going to make beef stew today. And we recently uh, picked up our beef uh, down at a, a really cool butcher shop. It's been there since 1869. Really neat place that my cousin showed me to. And we bought a beef. So we got some roasts that we want to cook up. So I'm going to do some canned beef stew. And I'll tell you what, it couldn't be easier. And uh, before we get started, I want to give a shout out to uh, this week's subscribers. Uh, we got John Perez, Jamie Lee Newman, Ken Strom, Kyle Casella, or might be Casilla, uh, depends on how it's, it's elder silent, so I apologize if I got your name wrong, and uh, Gary Brittier. Those are folks that just tuned in with us this week, and uh, we welcome you guys. So we're going to get to it. We got our jars all cleaned up and ready to rock we're going to get the canner on the stove and get the water going in that and we're going to start getting our vegetables and our meat cut up and we'll come back when we got that done all right folks we got most of our ingredients here ready to go the other stuff is just herbs and spices and stuff like that a little bit of uh, crushed garlic but we're using the wide mouth jars because this stuff's a little chunky so the wide mouth jars are easier to get it out of. We got our canner heating up over here. And this is what's called a cold pack. We're going to pack all this stuff into the jars cold. And it's going to cook in the jar while it's in the canner. It's going to be in there for quite some time. It's going to cook under pressure. And that good Nebraska beef right there is going to get super tender. Not that it's not tender enough already. That's some good stuff. But uh, I'm going to start packing this stuff in the jars. And once we get some jars packed, we'll come back and show you what it looks like. All right, we've got our meat packed into the jars. And by packed, I just threw it in there. You see some jars may be fuller than others, but this isn't rocket surgery. So I went ahead and put the dry herbs in there that I'm going to use. I put a quarter teaspoon of each of rosemary and thyme. And those are dry spices Stuff that we dried from the garden and if you've never cooked with herbs before uh, I highly suggest it it uh, really gives the food a really good earthy flavor and if you want to get to know herbs a little bit better go check out our herb video it'll show you how to dry them and kind of store them and stuff like that so we're gonna go ahead and start packing the rest of the vegetables in and uh, we'll come back alrighty we got it all placed in the jars and if you notice we're using quart jars which is a good amount two servings for two people so Kelly and I can have a good dinner on that now this would be pretty handy also for like a quick lunch I could do these in in smaller batches do them in pint jars which would be half and uh, if Kelly was running late she could grab one of those take it to work and just microwave it at work and she's got lunch uh, so since uh, we got the vegetables in there we put in a half teaspoon of crushed garlic and then we've got these little spoons here I don't know if you've ever seen them they're pretty cool they're smaller than your regular measuring spoons but it's a drop a smidge a pinch a dash and a tad pretty cool huh so I'm gonna do a smidge of black pepper into each jar too. We're not going to add any salt because the beef stock we're going to top that up with has the salt in it. Be right back. So use some really good beef broth and you're going to put enough in the jar to bring it right up to that one inch head space. We'll put a little bit more in that one. We've got those two filled already. Homemade's better if you got it. Alright our jars are filled. Now you want to get one of these little thin spatulas, shove down on the jar, 
and move stuff around a little bit. You want to try to get all them air bubbles out of there. And you'll see once you get all the air bubbles out, you may have to put a little more stock into the chop or top off the jar. Now we're doing this cold pack. So the stock that we added was also cold. Remember, you don't have to do this stuff hot because that canner will not come up to temp and you won't start your time until everything in there is boiling temperature. So, yeah, it may take a little longer for your canner to come up to temp when you're doing cold pack, but to me it's just a lot easier. And I just got to babysit my canner longer, but that's not a big deal. And if you notice, we've got seven jars. That's because that canner fits seven jars. So if you're wondering what amounts we're using for all of this, I just planned on seven jars. Now I can tell you we used about uh, just under three quarts of stock beef broth. But the other stuff you saw is just basically a paper plate full of vegetables. And that's what we came out with with the, the celery, the potatoes, the carrots, and the onions. About a paper plate uh, full of each. And then the beef, we had three to four pounds. I like probably leaning more towards four because I like the beef, the beef to be the star of the show. So we're going to lid these up uh, after we check our head space and top them off. And we're going to throw them in the canner. Be back in a little bit. All right, we topped them up. Uh, don't be alarmed if you don't have enough vegetables to fill your jar. You do need some broth in your stew. So that's not a problem. As long as you stay below that one inch head space, you're good to go. So a little bit of white vinegar on a paper towel. You're just going to wipe those sealing surfaces in case you've got any foreign material on there. That'll clean that off. We didn't use a funnel uh, or canning funnel when we filled these. We just threw it in by hand. So you tend to get a little more hit in the rim when you do that. So then we throw the lids on. Remember those lids need to purge while they're boiling. So you don't want them crazy, crazy tight. They're not underwater in the canner, so no water is going to seep into your jar. And you might ask why I didn't boil the lids. Remember, if you watched our last video, remember this is like a giant autoclave. Everything in there is going to be sterile when we're done. So not a big deal. Now if you're water bathing, yes, I would, I would probably boil those lids, and I do. So, a good rule of thumb, uh, with one hand, don't grab the jar, but if you can push down and just tighten the lid with one hand, like till the jar spins, that's tight enough. That's what you're looking for. So, we're going to get the canner loaded up. Alright, we got packed, we got the lid on, we have the vent open, remember. Uh, if you want a more in-depth canning video, go back... Uh, to our last video where we can that bone broth it's a little more detailed but we're gonna bring this thing up to temperature and it'll start steaming we'll close the vent we'll bring it up to pressure here uh, always check your elevation for your correct pressure we're uh, above 2,000 feet here so between 2,000 and I believe 3,000 feet uh, you have to go up one pound or increase five minutes. Some recipes will tell you either or. So we're going to do uh, 90 minutes for these quarts. And that's after it comes up to pressure. That you don't start your time until it's up to the 10 pounds. But we're going to go a little over 10 pounds. It's fine. Uh, if you're doing pints, it would be 75 minutes. So we'll come back. Uh, when this thing is closed up and we bring it up to pressure, we'll show you what it looks like if you haven't seen the other video. And we'll start our timer. And uh, we'll show you the finished product after that. Now folks, you can can anything that you cook. 
you cook beans or soup or anything you can can it um, if you find meat on sale at the store you don't have to go buy a quarter of a beef but if you find some reduced price beef or chicken or anything you can buy it up make some stuff in bulk make enough for seven jars or whatever you want to do 14 jars if you want and uh, put some away for later while it's cheap uh, if it's in abundance or if it's cheap, that's the time to can, and that's what canning's all about. Now, if you wanted to do this hot pack, I would recommend that you brown your beef. It'll give it a little extra more flavor because of that uh, Maillard effect that they talk about. It kind of develops the sugars on the outer skin of the meat and gives you a little bit deeper flavor. But... If you're cold packing, that's going to cause you issues because you got a weird temperature going on in there for too long a time. If you're going to hot pack, you could do that. So go ahead and brown your beef, uh, put everything in there hot, heat your stock up. That way you're, you're coming up to temp quicker and you're not in that area where you're going to get any kind of spoilage or anything like that going on. But I don't even know if that would hurt you because of the, the pressure canner is going to sterilize that stuff. So it's just weird. But uh, try to be as safe as you can, even though steam canning is pretty safe. Now, what I like to do with this beef stew, I like it a little bit thicker, but I don't want to cook it when it's thick because the chances are you might burn it on the bottom. I don't know if it would do that in a canner because it's surrounded by heat, but I just don't take the chance. So when I pull some of this out, I'll put a quarter cup of oil and a quarter cup of flour. It doesn't matter what kind of oil. It could be butter. Uh, olive oil if you're being a little more health conscious uh, quarter cup of oil quarter cup of flour stir that up as a roux and then once that's cooked a little bit dump your quart of stew into that and that'll give you just a little bit thicker stew now this would be good over like noodles if there wasn't potatoes in the mix because I don't you're not supposed to do like a double starch but you know who cares but um, you could leave the potatoes out of this recipe and you could dump that over some egg noodles would be really good. Uh, sky's the limit, just like on any other recipe. Make it your own. All right, we closed that vent after it started steaming steady. Purged the pot out. Now we're up to 11 pounds. We're going to start our 90-minute timer. And we're going to keep watching the pressure if we need to throttle down the... the uh, fire we I know we will it's just got to give it a little time here I think the sweet spot on this dough is about medium low uh, once it gets going so we'll see you 90 minutes plus because we're gonna let this thing completely cool down before we uh, take the jars out it's got to come down to zero pressure and then cool off a little bit we'll see you then so it took pretty much 45 minutes for that to come up to pressure it's uh, not a fast process obviously but that's because we cold packed if you do hot pack it'll obviously it'll come up to pressure quicker however i like the cold pack because i can control the uh, the amount of the ingredients in the jar a little bit better you don't end up with a jar full of potatoes and carrots with no meat in it which could happen sometimes if you're hot packing and just dumping all that stuff out of a pot into the into the jars. So I think it's a good trade-off for the ease of it. What's the old saying? You can have it good, fast, or cheap, but you can't have all three. You got to pick two. And I'll let that rattle around in your head. Now, say you wanted some like vegetable beef soup. I would leave out the potatoes and put in some tomatoes and then you got vegetable beef soup straight out of the jar don't have to do nothing to it pretty crazy huh you can change your spices you can add other vegetables you can use other meat the like I said before and I, I hate to say it over and over but this guy really is the limit when you're cooking stuff so this is what it looks like in my kitchen when I got a long canning period. I bring a chair in and I just sit here and watch my canner, watch the pressure. I have found the sweet spot right there and that dial has not moved in probably 30 minutes. 
So you can find a sweet spot. And you'll notice once it calms down to where it needs to be, there's not a lot of steam or anything blowing all over the place. It pretty much just sits there and does a real slow simmer. But I sit here and play on my phone and, and do whatever. You can wash dishes because it's right behind me and you just turn around and look at the thing every now and then. But once you get to sweet spot, you can walk away for a little bit. But you don't want to go sit down and watch a movie or something like that. You need to be mindful. Uh, now, speaking about like cooking in the kitchen and heat and steam and all that. Uh, I remember a lot of the Portuguese women when I was growing up, they would have a second stove uh, out in their garage. So like if it was the heat of the summer, they didn't use a lot of air conditioning back then. Even if they had it, they didn't turn it on. They'd just tough it out and keep the bill down. But they'd have a stove out in their garage for when they were doing a lot of canning or cooking or like frying fish. You don't get the smells in the house. Because you can do that out in the garage. So they had a separate cooking area out in the garage. It's kind of a good idea thinking about it now that I'm older. That would uh, be pretty cool. But you could do it with a camp stove. Like I said in the in the other canning video. You can do a camp stove out in the garage. If you got a big crazy burner though. Be careful. That's a lot of heat. So we got probably about 40 minutes left. And we'll be back talking to you then. All right, folks, our canner has gone back down to zero. We're going to open open our vent here. You can hear, even though the pressure is down to zero, it's still steaming there. And now we're going to bleed all that off until it don't make no sound no more, and then we're going to open that lid. Okay, we let all of that steam bleed off, and now I've cracked the lid... And I've just left it ajar a little bit. You want to be careful when you do that that you don't get steam burns or whatever. Because it's still extremely hot in that canner. So the reason I leave the lid crack like that is to let some more of the heat escape. And you don't get this sudden rush of cold air into the canner. Because you don't want you want to avoid crazy fast temperature fluctuations. Uh, you don't want to do that to your jars in there. So now we've got just about all that steam out of there. And we'll come back in a minute. We'll pull that lid off. So we pulled the lid off. If you look closely in there, you can see the contents are still boiling inside those jars. We've never seen that before. So those jars are still venting. You're not going to hear them start popping until that boiling stops. And we're going to leave these jars in the canner until the boiling in the jars stops. Until they cool down quite a bit. And then we'll move them out here. Make sure you put a cloth towel down on the counter. Remember, like I said, you don't want to put them down on a cold counter. And then I have that handy dandy wide mouth jar lifter we're going to use that to lift these jars out and they'll sit on this counter probably till morning before they get moved when they're cooled to the touch okay folks we got seven quart jars of fantastic beef stew and i wish you could smell the kitchen right now kelly walked in from work going oh man is that dinner and i'm like no sorry it's for the root cellar. But we're going to have some good Nebraska ribeye for dinner and some asparagus out of the garden. So she's going to be okay with that. So I hope you thought when you saw this process like I did when I first saw it, man, that's crazy easy because it really is. And I hope I've inspired you to do some canning because that's what our goal is to get you guys to do some stuff the old way and learn how to do stuff the old way. So if you want to keep seeing videos like ours, make sure you subscribe, but you don't have to. Just come back and see us every now and then if you want. So until next time, stay safe, stay healthy. Bye-bye.